Hey beloveds, welcome to Beanie TV where I offer you sprinkles of spiritual sassiness. Go ahead and get ready for today's affirmation. Go ahead and close your eyes. <laughs> Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Today's affirmation is, I open my heart to receive God's healing. I open my heart to receive God's healing. I open my heart to receive God's healing. Go ahead and take a deep breath in. Exhale. All right, that was all over the place, but you get the idea. Let the Lord fill you up. Let the Lord fill you up. What is up, my spiritual Lisa's and my manifesting, my, my, I, what is happening? My miracle-minded men. I think I'm just like trying to show you guys this shirt. Look at how cute this is. So my elbows are exposed and then it's like, In honor of the number seven, seven is the number of completion. Let's complete this year with seven things uh, to get to know me. Seven things about me. Um, seven random things about me. One is that I cry a lot in public. Like, if you look at me real quick, like you will probably see a tear streaming down. I remember I used to be going to my uncle's house in Brooklyn, walking down Flatbush, crying silent tears like coming down my face drying out my face um yeah i cry in public a lot i'll cry on the bus sometimes i cry if i'm happy sometimes i cry if my, i'm sad my mom says that my tear ducts are too loose very gunny and very african um so yeah i cry a lot i cry about any old thing i'll cry about something beautiful that i see and i um, appreciate that about myself before I used to think that it was like obviously like you know I think everyone is taught that like crying is a sign of weakness it's not just boys it can also be in households where whether you're like coming from when you're a first generation and a first generationer and your family comes from like Ghana Korea India like you know that type of culture having that emotional uh uh comfort isn't so, sometimes is not there so it's deemed weak when <laughs> you cry as a child or whatever so um i honor my loose tear ducts i honor that i am an emotional being i honor that um the second thing about me is that i go into silent mode when i'm in pms i don't want to fucking talk to nobody i don't want to look at nobody i don't want to look at anything i don't want to talk Okay, when I'm in PMS, it's just like, sometimes I just get so low in my PMS that I'm just like, wait, am I even the same person? So I actually should probably look into that. Um, the third thing is, um, I started traveling when I was seven. I have a passport, get you a password if you don't have one. Um, and the first city that I ever traveled to when I was seven years old was London. So. Lots of Ghanaians, when they are deciding to leave Ghana, they either go to London or they go to um, they come to America. So my family, I have an aunt and amazing, wonderful cousins in London. Yeah, the first place I traveled to was London. So they say that between the ages of zero and seven, every the, the a child absorbs everything. So going to London and subconsciously picking up that accent like i don't call my mom mom i call my mom mummy <laughs> and i still sometimes some words it'll sound like i'm like british or whatever like my accent i think i have a very universal accent but sometimes with some words like um you'll hear like something come out and it's like wait what like where was that accent from i'm like i don't know but yeah, so I don't call my mom mom, I call my mom mummy. I've been back, I think, I went when I was seven, I went when I was 18, and I went when I was 21, and I went when I was 27. So I've been back a few times. Again, I have family there. If you have not checked out my video with me and my UK cousins here in LA, be sure to check that out. Um, when I'm at work, I'll take receipt paper and write out affirmations and things I visualize. I do not like my job. Do I ever? Like, do I ever? In the history of Beanie TV, do I ever like my job? Like, I feel like the jobs that I like don't stick around and the jobs that I dislike are just stretching me and getting me ready for the next phase of my life. But when I'm at work and I feel like shit, I will take a piece of paper, excuse me, and I will write out affirmations. I will 
go to the bathroom and pray. I will visualize. I will do whatever I can to realign myself with the fact that this is just a moment in time. It's not going to last forever. And everything I'm doing, everything for everything I do is not for nothing. Five, I had a spiritual awakening when I was 19. So, the first spiritual book that kept calling me to it was The Secret. I read The Secret when I was 19. Every, like, I lived across the street from a mall, so I grew up a mall rat. We would be up in that mall, stealing Cinnabons, like, wrecking, ha wreaking, wrecking havoc. Um, and the bookstore had The Secret just out in the front, and I was just drawn to it. So I would go and I would read and I would flip open to the same two sections. One section is about, one section would, would talk about forgiving your father and the other section would talk about how you can manifest yourself losing weight because I felt like I just wasn't happy in my body at 19. So I would always flip open to those two things. So every time we would go to the mall, like three or four times, I would be led to go to look at the secret. And then finally one day I read it. So I started reading The Secret and that's when I was like, oh my God, I can manifest my affirmations, God, universe, what? And I, like my mind exploded and something clicked for me and I've been on that journey ever since. But I will tell you guys a dream that I had that I still remember to this day was I was in, let's just say I was in Washington Square Park because that's how it looked and it was bright and it was sunny. And there was a waterfall and the water looked so vivid and clear and real and there was a huge like parrot and the parrot was bright and vibrant and i will never forget that dream and i woke up and i looked it up and it the parrot symbolizes spiritual awakenings so the secret helped me have my spiritual awakening um and i'll definitely never forget that that's definitely one of the but that was the beginning of everything that I do today like without the secret I don't know where I would be um number six I have 10 and gray eyelashes I don't know why they started in did they start in high school or college or after because I was stressed as fuck um I don't remember but I have like 10 gray eyelashes if you catch me on a day where i'm not wearing makeup just look really really like look really really close and you'll see it um and seven when i'm cooking on instagram i have no idea what i'm doing do you guys know that like by now like i don't know what i'm doing when it comes to cooking i'm just going along and i've always been like that i didn't realize i was like that until i got called out on it by my ex and um so yeah i like to say that i make concoctions clever concoctions i don't use measuring cups i don't do any of that like i do my best that's what i do i do my best and a bonus one number eight is that i am obsessed and have a deep love for princess diana and this is definitely linked to again going to london at a young age and and having family in london and my mom living in london for a long time the royal family is important and obviously uh, the british colonized ghana so um that is also an, an, like colon colonization clo colonialism whichever word is a big thing in in ghana and um it's just part of i, I think it's just part of us it's just part of the dna and when princess diana died like that was real it was real and i and even at a young age i felt it and i still feel it and i'm obsessed with watching princess diana documentaries and um right now i'm watching the crown and just learning the history i just it's just a dynamic history princess diana was humble and she was like sound in herself when you watch the documentary she's sound in herself she was just a woman and she was elegant and she wasn't gonna let the world define who she was no matter how she wasn't gonna let her royal position define who she was she was she broke barriers in the royal family she was 
touching people with AIDS and HIV and that was unheard of and people had never seen that so I know that God really brought her on this earth to just shift some things around and I really love Princess Diana and um yeah people don't know that about me at all people don't know that at all that I really just I I'm I love Princess Diana I love looking up to her and I hope that like in my life I can be similar to you know her and her and her philanthropic ways and her being a humanitarian like she she's definitely like someone to look up to in that arena and area so that was it guys seven plus one random things about me um i thank you guys for tuning in let me know some random things about you which one of my random favorite things was something that surprised you um yeah i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you want some more random things like seven random things about my love life eight random things about my career like whatever you guys want let me know in the comments below i thank you guys for tuning in and i'll see you guys next video Look at this.